Hello everyone, my name is Charlotte Moreau and I'm a pharmacy student from Rutgers University. Today I will be giving a brief presentation on low-dose naltrexone, also known as LDN. The objectives of my presentation are to explain the mechanism of action of LDN, list various disease states for which LDN is being used, provide a dosing strategy for LDN, discuss the common side effects of LDN and ways to minimize them, and finally describe ways in which LDN is compounded. Naltrexone falls into a class of medications known as opioid antagonists. It is FDA approved for the treatment of alcohol use disorder and opioid dependence. Although the dosing varies depending on the disease, you can see that the range is usually about 50 to 100 milligrams per day. However, doses up to 300 milligrams daily can be used. Low-dose naltrexone, or LDN, refers to daily dosages of naltrexone that are approximately one-tenth of the typical opioid addiction treatment dose. The typical dose is usually 1.5 to 4.5 milligrams at bedtime, taken between 9 p.m. and 3 a.m. The range of doses, however, can be as low as 0.5 milligrams and as high as 10 milligrams but it is important to note that the maximum dose that was studied in clinical trials was 4.5 mg daily. LDN works by causing a brief period of opioid receptor blockade. This triggers a rebound stimulation of endorphins the following day, which leads to an adaptive increase in both endorphin and enkephalin production. An increase in endorphins has been shown to be important for normalizing the immune response. This effect, however, appears to be dose-dependent and has not been seen with higher doses of 50 to 300 milligrams. So you may be wondering, what are endorphins and enkephalins? These are often referred to as the body's natural painkillers since they work on opioid receptors to produce natural analgesia. They have also been shown to have other positive effects in the human body, such as promoting healing, reducing inflammation, augmenting the immune system, providing a sense of euphoria, well-being, and satisfaction, and finally inhibiting cell growth, which could be important in cancer. LDN is most commonly being used for chronic fatigue syndrome, multiple sclerosis, autoimmune thyroid diseases, and various cancers. However, it's also being used for other conditions such as fibromyalgia, chronic pain, and GI diseases. You might wonder how one drug can have a positive effect on all of these disease states. And what is important to note here is that these disorders share a particular feature, and that is that the immune system plays a central role in all of them. So how does naltrexone really work? It was recently discovered that naltrexone is a 50-50 mixture of two different shapes, or isomers. Each isomer has a very distinct biologic function. Levonaltrexone is a pure opioid antagonist and binds to opioid receptors. As I mentioned earlier, this causes an increase in endorphin release, which modulates the immune response. Dextronaltrexone, the other isomer, antagonizes toll-like receptors, or TLRs, which are a class of proteins that play a key role in the immune system. Suppressing the cytokine-modulated immune system is important not only for immunity, but also inflammation. TLRs also control the production of NF-kappa B, which is a group of proteins that also play a role in many cellular processes, including immune, immunity and inflammatory responses. Again, I just want to remind everyone that this mechanism is dose-dependent and has only been seen at lower doses. Of course, patients should take naltrexone the way that it was prescribed by their doctor. Just like most medications that are newly prescribed, it, it's often a good idea to start low and gradually increase the dose over a period of time. For LDN, this is usually done over several weeks until patients are stable and side effect free. Usually the starting dose ranges from 0.5 to 1.5 milligrams and is increased over one to two months to a maintenance dose of 4.5 milligrams. However, some patients have been prescribed doses above 4.5 milligrams or take it twice a day. 
With LDN, a higher dose does not necessarily mean a better benefit. Each individual patient must find the dose that suits them, and this may be as low as 1.5 milligrams. Here is an example of how the dose of LDN can be titrated over four weeks. Again, this is not the only way that naltrexone is dosed, and there is no one-size-fits-all. Nonetheless, a patient may be started on 1.5 milligrams daily at bedtime for two weeks. If the patient experiences a beneficial effect during this time, they should be continued on this dose. If the patient does not have any relief of symptoms, the dose can then be doubled to 3 mg daily for two weeks. If doubling the dose leads to side effects, it's suggested to decrease the dose back down for seven days to see if these subside. Again, if the patient does not experience any beneficial effect on 3 mg daily, the dose can then be increased to 4.5 mg daily, which is the usual maintenance dose. With side effects, decreasing the dose for seven days can be helpful. However, changing the timing of dosing is also another strategy, which I will discuss later in my presentation. Depending on the disease state, patients may be started on different doses. For most autoimmune diseases, prescribers will start at 1 or 1.5 milligrams and increase to 4.5 milligrams over four weeks. For Hashimoto's thyroiditis, a condition in which the thyroid does not make enough hormone, chronic fatigue syndrome, and fibromyalgia, the starting dose is usually lower at 0.5 mg, and the titration may be over a little bit longer period of time. Finally, for cancer, the dosing is similar, but it is important to avoid taking LDN the week before and the week after chemotherapy. Considering that LDN is such a low dose, it is uncommon to cause any side effects. Furthermore, side effects are less likely to occur when a small starting dose is used and gradually increased over time. However, the most common side effect is sleep disturbances, which can present as vivid dreams and insomnia. Luckily, this rarely persists after the first week. However, if it does, the timing of administration may be switched to the morning or two hours or more before bedtime. LDN may also initially worsen symptoms of specific diseases. For example, for multiple sclerosis, this may present as increased fatigue or spasticity. For chronic fatigue syndrome, an onset of apparent flu-like symptoms may occur. GI side effects such as nausea, constipation, or diarrhea are extremely rare. However, if they do occur, patients may request sublingual drops, as these transfer directly into the bloodstream and bypass the GI tract. Stomach upset may also be treated with over-the-counter products such as Prilosec, Zantac, Gaviscon, or Pepto-Bismol. However, patients should be advised not to use kaolin, morphine, or loperamide. In general, if side effects are troublesome, it is not a good idea to keep increasing the dose. Rather, the dose should be reduced by 50% for 7 days before increasing it again. LDN can be taken with other medications or supplements as long as they are not opioids. Examples of opioids include fentanyl, loperidine, morphine, oxycodone, and hydrocodone. It's also important not to forget about tramadol and codeine, which are milder medications, but nonetheless are still opioids. LDN also has drug interactions with anti-rejection immunosuppressants, which are commonly taken by transplant patients. However, LDN is safe to combine with steroids, gabapentin, and pregabalin. Naltrexone was initially tested in humans for safety at the 50 to 100 mg dose level. At these doses, it may affect the liver. However, physicians who prescribe LDN feel that at such a low dose, it is unlikely to cause any harm. Patients, however, with pre-existing liver and kidney conditions using LDN should still have their metabolic functions monitored by their doctors. There have been a number of studies done that assess naltrexone administered at a low dose. To date, no major safety issues have been found. However, no studies have been done to see the long-term effects of LDN, and it is currently unknown whether the long-term use of LDN could have effects similar to those of high-dose naltrexone. 
There are some cautions that patients should be aware of when first beginning to take LDN. For example, patients who chronically take opioids may require 10 to 14 days of slowly weaning off such drugs before being able to begin LDN. Also, patients who are taking thyroid hormone replacement for Hashimoto's thyroiditis should be aware that LDN may lead to a prompt decrease in their autoimmune disorder, which then may require a rapid reduction in the dose of the thyroid hormone replacement. LDN may counter the effects of immunosuppressant medications taken by organ transplant recipients. They, therefore, they are cautioned against taking LDN. And finally, LDN users who are planning to have surgery that will require anesthesia and or pain medications generally should discontinue LDN one or two days prior to the scheduled procedure. They are able to restart it promptly after the surgery once they are no longer taking opioids or narcotics. The main goal of LDN is to slow or halt the progression of the disease that it is being prescribed for. Additionally, this may improve symptoms, which can include a decrease in pain exacerbations, improved function, and better tolerance to pain. It is important to note that LDN may not work immediately, and it can take anywhere from a few weeks to many months. Users have reported to notice a difference after about 9 to 12 months. This is not to say, however, that some patients will experience benefit quickly after starting LDN. Fortunately, LDN continues to show a benefit after the initial response in a lot of patients. Here is a pie chart from an early clinical trial that has not been published that shows self-reported improvement in symptoms after daily LDN treatment in fibromyalgia patients. As you can see, most patients, about 37%, did report much improved symptoms, and even 13% had very much improved symptoms. About 20% had no change, and 10% had minimally worse symptoms. Naltrexone is manufactured as 50 mg pills. Compounding pharmacies can prepare LDN to any dose prescribed, and this can be in the form of liquids, capsules, tablets, sublingual drops, and topical creams. The pharmacy must produce LDN in an instant release formulation and not as slow or modified release. Lactose and calcium carbonate should not be used as fillers, and instead microcrystalline is preferred. It's also possible for compounding pharmacies to change the inactive ingredients or fillers, especially if a reaction is suspected. For example, using a gluten-free filler may be appropriate in a patient with celiac disease. Listed here are the common strengths for each of the different formulations of LDN, along with approximate cost. These may vary depending on a patient's specific compounding pharmacy. In general, you can see that creams are more expensive than any of the oral formulations. However, overall, these prices are relatively inexpensive. In summary, some advantages of LDN are that it is inexpensive, unlikely to cause side effects, and has no known abuse potential. Some disadvantages are that since the 4.5 mg dose is not available commercially, Patients may try to create their own dosing by splitting 50 mg tablets, which could lead to variable day-to-day -day dosing. It is likely that the 4.5 mg dose is not the optimal dosage for all individuals that are being treated with LDN. However, this was the maximum dose studied in clinical trials, and therefore prescribers may be reluctant to increasing the dose. As I mentioned earlier, other dosing schedules, such as twice a day, are being used but have not been explored in clinical studies. Also, even though naltrexone has a long history of safe use with a wide range of large doses, we still know very little about the long-term safety of the drug when used chronically in low doses. The low dose is often used as a reason for clinicians and patients not to be concerned about safety. However, we must be open to the possibility that the unique clinical effects seen with the low dosage could also present new health risks. Finally, as an off-label, non-mainstream treatment, LDL may not be covered by insurance plans. However, the low overall cost of LDN may make it accessible even to patients who do not have insurance coverage. A few key takeaways from my presentation 
are that LDN does have proven beneficial effects in several autoimmune diseases as well as other chronic conditions. In terms of dosing, it's always a good idea to start low and go slow. Overall, gen LDN is generally well tolerated, but it's important to remember that it may take months for a benefit to be seen. And finally, LDN can be compounded in many different formulations, so it's an always a good idea to talk to your pharmacist. I hope that you have found this presentation to be helpful and help you learn more about LDN.